Welcome back to Zeman Outdoors. Today I wanted to talk about how I color fill my guns. And I've gotten some questions on this and I really like doing it because I think it looks cool. Other than that, it doesn't really do much for you. But I'm about to start building a six and a half Creedmoor Texas edition. And so I went ahead and started to color fill. Then I thought it'd be a good idea to do a video on how I do my color fill and show y'all how to do that as well. So as you can see, I've already kind of color filled some of the Texas logo here. And then I did the arrow precision here as well. And so I've been using red and white. And so I'm just gonna go through this process real quick. So what you'll need is some non-acetone, the fingernail polish of choice, a couple rags or t-shirts, and then a credit card, you may need a toothpick for some fine details. And that's pretty much it. This is a pretty simple process and you can use whatever colors you want. And the cool thing with using fingernail polish is you can take it off easily if you don't like it. So I wouldn't worry too much about messing it up. But I'm gonna go ahead and show you this process. So on this side, we have a Texas logo, and then we have the fire and safe switch as well. On these arrow precision lowers, the fire and safe is kind of indented a little bit, so it actually makes it kind of tough. So I'm gonna try something new with the toothpick and see if that helps make it a little bit cleaner. But here is pretty straightforward, so I'm gonna start with that. So what you'll need to do is take your non-acetone and one of your rags and just get that a little bit wet there. You're just going to wipe down where you plan on putting your polish because you want to get all that oil off of there so that your polish will stick. And you can dry that off a little bit there too. So I'm going to start with the white and what I've learned through this process is this red that I have isn't very bright. So I have to paint everything white first and then I come back over it with red once the white dries. If you want to keep white, you can do that. Or if you find you have a good red polish that is bright and sticks, you can do that as well. But I'm going to go ahead and show you all how I start with the white. So you'll just slowly kind of fill in your engravings here. And you don't have to make this messy and just blob it on there. You can kind of just trace the outline. It'll make the cleanup a little bit easier. You do want to make sure you get inside there and all of it, otherwise you'll have to come back and touch it up a little bit. So before all this dries, you're going to want to take your card and just try and wipe off the excess if you can do that. And so you'll want to just wipe your card down. And so that'll just help a little bit in the long run. So while that's drying, we'll come over here and do these. So this is where I'm gonna test out my toothpick method here and see how well this works. So I'm just gonna get a little paint on the toothpick. And I just can't get the credit card in here and so it makes it a little bit easier if I don't just splatter a bunch in there Oop, like that <laughs> oh that's not what i want to do but we'll have to touch that up and you can see it's going to get to these outer edges and it's going to make it a little bit of a mess so if you wanted to you can kind of come in here and just dab that up a little bit try and clean it up and make it a little bit easier once that starts to dry so i've already gotten kind of some white paint on this so you can probably see that and it'll just smear everywhere. So once you kind of use one and get some white paint on it, I just go ahead and set that aside because you're not really gonna wanna use it again. All right, so that's mostly dry. I can tell the inside of the star is not quite that dry, so I'm gonna kind of avoid that right now. Put a little more acetone on a clean cloth, and you'll just lightly go over this here. You don't wanna go too hard, otherwise you'll start pulling some of the paint 
out of the engravings. And if you do want to start over, really all you have to do is get some acetone and you can get a brush or a toothpick and you can kind of scrape out all the white of the engraving and, and just start over. You can see kind of how it gets in that crevice there. I'm going to have to scrape that out now, unfortunately. You can use your nail a little bit, but it only works so well. So once you get it kind of as clean as you can with that cloth, you're going to take another one, get the last tone on it, and you can kind of see there's a little white around the edges still. So I'm just going to come over here and try and clean that up a bit. We're going to try and clean this up here, get a little last tone in there. And then I'm going to take a new toothpick and try and just scrape some of that up. You may be able to kind of use the... Uh, cloth as well and just have the toothpick like this and that'll help clean it up some so you can see how on these arrows it can kind of be a pain because of these engravings so you really want to try and go slow and as neat as possible otherwise you end up doing what I'm doing here I'm not sure how well y'all can tell but you know this still looks like it's not as white as I'd like it and there's a couple spots kind of missing here and there so I'm going to kind of get my toothpick again and try and be a little more careful this time. Once all this dries, I'm going to come back and I'll show you how I come back over it with the red. The reason I use old t-shirts or these gun cleaning cloths is they don't leave a lot of fibers and they're real thin. So they don't try and pull all the paint out of your crevices either. Looks like we are dry here. So I'm going to take the red, shake it up a bit, and we'll do the same thing on this one. So I'm going to actually start over here with a new toothpick and fill in the fire. So I just wanted to cut in here before everybody got their panties in a bundle about the colors. Yes, I know I made a mistake and I had done fire as white and safe as red. But like I mentioned with using fingernail polish, it's easy to fix any mistakes you make. So I went ahead and used the non-acetone, wiped out all the red here, and then took a toothpick and just scraped out the engravings and started over I just wanted to show you all that I did correct this and so you may see it opposite in the rest of the video but your safe should be white and your fire should be red or if you wanted to use different colors you could do that as well. Now back to your regular scheduled program. And I don't know if it's just the type of polish this is but this one's just a lot more liquidy and so uh, that's why I have to do the white first. So we'll get that filled in. I'm going to let it dry a little bit before I touch it up because of how liquidy it is. So we're going to come over and do the Texas. And with the red, you may want to come back and do a second coat or two, just depending on how red you really want it to be. It's hard to tell. The middle of this star doesn't quite look dry, so I'm going to give that a second because I don't want to smear the white everywhere. Just going to want to use this non acetone and remove any of the excess off. And you'll be able to see kind of little clumps that you need to kind of go over maybe a little bit more so that it looks nice and neat. It looks like I'm probably going to want to do a second coat on both of these. And I believe the middle's probably. Yeah, it looks like. Uh, I can probably do the middle of the star now as well. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. We are going to let that dry. You can see this is kind of a tedious process, but if you do it well and you do it right the first time, it should last a long time and you really shouldn't have any issues with having to redo it. One thing I do like about fingernail polish is it does seem to dry a little bit quicker. So that's part of the reason why I like using that as well. Once everything's dried up and it's kind of the way you want it, you can take your non-acetone and a clean cloth 
just get a little bit of that on there and you're just going to wipe off you can kind of see where i still have some excess there so just kind of lightly wipe that off And I like to take a somewhat dry one and just kind of wipe it off to clean it up, make sure I have everything I want off there. So that's how I do my color fill. It's pretty simple. Obviously some of these are a little bit more difficult, like trying to fill in the star there. But if you're just doing a logo or the serial number or just a basic engraving like that, it's pretty straightforward. It doesn't take very long. One thing that you can't forget to do is when you are done with it and you have wiped it down and it's to your liking, you're going to want to come back with some oil over the spots that you've wiped non-acetone on because that wipes away all the oil on this. So you're going to want to oil that back up. If you have any questions on how I did this or any comments of ways to do it better, please feel free to leave a comment below. And I hope you all follow along on my 6.5 Creedmoor build. Thanks, guys.